Lobuto was born largely in response to the devastating effects of the HIV AIDS pandemic. The model for Lobuto was incubated at the Fountain of Hope Drop-In Center for Street Kids in the late 1990s, early 2000s, when Lusaka, Zambia was teeming with young people who were living on the streets on their own, most often as a result of orphaning caused by the AIDS virus. I became a part of Fountain of Hope, the only place open to those children in those days. Participating in the children's tragic lows and exuberant artistic highs that offered moments of transcendence of their unimaginably difficult circumstances. I started a read aloud program with beautiful books and stories that took the children who were building new voices and identities from the rich mis mixture of music, dance, and drama shared by talented Fountain of Hope caretakers soaring above and beyond their world. Its immediate impact made clear that what we were offering occupied a central place in their lives. In addition to the books and technology, Lobuto libraries were defined from the start as a place where caring Zambians brought their talents and gifts to those most vulnerable young people. But perhaps the most important activity that evolved to meet their needs was and is the mentoring that, both as a formal program and informally, pulled all the artistic and literary elements of the library together and drew children together into the supportive and accepting community they so desperately needed. At the library, as one observer said, Children who had lived their lives in the margins suddenly found themselves at the center and realized that they deserved to be there. Looking at the effect that Lobuto Libraries and their programs have since had on young people in over a million and a half visits, it's hard to identify any one resource or program as the reason why so many of them come to their library every chance they get at an average of 2,500 visits per week to a single library. But perhaps the current moment, a pandemic of a new virus that is changing the world, gives us insight into what may be Lobuto Library's most powerful draw. Mentoring at the libraries has never been limited to the various formal mentoring programs we have offered over the years. Those programs have ranged from Dr. Lawrence Makuka's Motivational Mentoring, an arts-based character development program that uses traditional storytelling and drama to teach values that strengthen children's self-esteem, to specialized mentoring on public health topics that help youth stay safe and free from diseases. We witnessed and measured dramatic positive impacts of those programs, but in many ways, mentoring is woven into all the library has to offer. Read aloud, translated and sign language story times, teaching young mothers to read while offering childcare for their babies, building self-confidence through acting, speaking, writing, drawing, discussing books, films, and ideas, talking with role model mentors, and on and on. The common element in all of this is people connecting, caring for, and helping one another. Since the coronavirus forced us to close the library's doors, our staff has been busy, as busy and dedicated as ever, using text messaging and phone calls to maintain their close relationships with children who are now dealing with anxiety and fear, and sorely missing their library. Brenda continues to remotely teach the young mothers and their children to read in English. Ernesto has been guiding children to express their fears and anxieties about COVID-19 in drawings and sending their drawings to him, moving instinctively into the realm of art therapy. Bessa types out and sends popular stories, think frog and toad, as text messages to parents and caregivers to read to their children. Youth contact Kenny to talk about the often very serious problems they are encountering. In the virtual mentoring sessions he has been conducting, 
He responds to their longing for the library to open again by discussing faith. When their anxiety increased because of the increasing spread of the coronavirus in their world, he guided them to think about having hope. It seems the natural progression from there is to focus on charity, love. In our rural library, the wide open outdoor spaces allow Esnart and Wemba to continue beloved story times and mentoring programs and creatively maintain the lifeline they have established for those girls that are escaping the fate of child marriage. As with the rest of the world, we cannot know what the new reality will look like after it's safe to let children come back to the libraries they so miss. The only thing that seems certain is that it will be different. Looking back at our origins in an earlier virus pandemic, we know that relying on the talents and generosity of caring Zambians and on the strong pool of community has created something that is just what children and their communities want and need. That experience sheds light on our future directions and can guide us going forward. The children who so fervently miss coming to their library are not primarily clamoring to read books or use computers. They are eager to talk with our staff, to share their issues and situations, to get advice and support from their very caring and empathetic mentors at the library. Those essential mentoring relationships are a lifeline to and between the children and our staff. Mentoring in all the rich and varied forms it takes in Lobuto libraries has surfaced in my mind as our most enduring impact in offering to children. That and the embrace of an accepting and joyful community.